be back in the house of God again with brethren that love the Lord. Turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. We're going to look at something this morning, beloved. Um, during the revival Friday night, it was something to become so evident. Uh, we, we knew these days were coming, that they were upon us, but boy, it was just so, so evident and so clear. We, here we were at a revival, and the only people there were preachers and teachers. Uh, there was nobody had invited anybody, and God love them, the little church that they had was small and dear like ours, and uh, they hadn't brought any guests either. And it's just hard to have revival when the church is just refusing to do the work that, that the Bible plainly says belongs to the church, which is the ministry of the gospel. And beloved, uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's prophesied days, and we know that the darkest hours before the dawn, and all these things are coming to pass because Christ said they would, uh, but at the same time, it's just so sad to see a, to see a lukewarm church that is just indifferent to anything that takes place outside of their own personal lives. And I'm thankful that we don't, that our church is not that way, that we do witness, that we do love, and that we, we are trying to serve our king. But that little church over there in West Jefferson, Alabama, was just like so many churches across the nation today. People just refuse, refuse, refuse to get involved with anything. It's not my place. It's not your place. They'll say whatever the reasons are. Excuses are excuses. You can grab whichever one you want to. Still an excuse before a holy God. Revelation chapter 3. I want to ask you as we're reading this passage, beloved. Paul says in 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Well, I'm going to read it to you. He says in 2 Timothy 4 and 8. That henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing. He said, at that day, we're going to receive a crown. At that day. We're also told in the book of Revelation, ain't we, sister? We're going to throw our crowns down because we realize we're not worthy. What you see in the church today, beloved, is people wanting to wear their crowns now. Are we wearing crowns or are we bearing our cross? That's the message this morning. Are we wearing crowns or are we bearing the cross? Christ said in the 16th chapter, when, when Peter was telling him, after Christ was telling him that he was fixing to be crucified and killed, and Peter says, no, no, it's, it's not going to happen. And Christ had just told him, get, get thee behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan because Peter, not that he was Satan and dwelt, but that he was clinging on to the things of this world. Christ goes on and says in verse 24 of Matthew 16, then Jesus... Uh, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Doesn't say anything about crown wearing right now. We're, we're told to take up the cross and follow him. He says in verse 25, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And he's talking about people, beloved, as we live our lives. Are you living your life to him? Are you sacrificing what you have? We just sung that song. At the cross, I, all I've got to give you is myself. Are we giving him ourselves? Or are we living this life and fitting him in when it's convenient for us? He says in verse 26, What is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So where are we living? Are we wearing our crowns now? Or are we bearing our crosses? You have so many of these prosperity gospel, which is not a gospel. It's another gospel, which Paul said those that preach it should be accursed. You've got them. You flip on your channel. You can see Creflo. You can see Joyce. You can see Joel. You can listen to whoever it is that's trying to convince you that your best life is right here today. That your every being for existence is for the right now. And they're taking flocks. Many people to hell through this false shepherding that's taking place. Because people are not loving enough to preach the truth. And for whatever reason, people will hear it, and it just goes in one ear and out the other. As soon as they're out the doors, the, the fowls, they're plucking that seed up out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. Christ is speaking to the Laodicean church, as we always use as a picture of the last day's church. Christ says, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, Revelation 3, verse 14. He says, write these things, saith the Amen, 
the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. And not that he was the first created, but that he was the origin of all creation. The Bible tells us that all things were created by him and for him were they created. Verse 15, he says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. He's talking people are right in the middle. They're right there in a comfy zone. They're not cold. They're right in the middle. They're not hot. They're not fervent. They're not on fire to serve Christ. They'll talk about being on fire, and they're, they're right in the middle. They're lukewarm. Anybody ever grab a cup of coffee that was warm, just lukewarm? It's nasty, isn't it? It's nasty. You've got to have coffee hot or cold. It's those frappuccinos you'll find in the little quick stops nowadays. You, you can't have it in between. You get a cup of coffee that's been sitting there all day and put it to your mouth, and what are you going to do? He'll spew it out. The same thing Christ said he was going to do to those that were like that. So then verse 16 says, Because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And you see churches like that. There's a church just right up the street that seems to add on every month. They hire full-time pastors just to preach to 7th and 8th graders. They have over $12, $13 million worth of disposable income a year. They think they're rich. Christ says you know not that you're poor, you're naked, you're miserable, you're blind. How do I know he's talking about those churches? Who else is he talking to, beloved? His churches are little flocks. His churches are a remnant. And you find them scattered throughout the United States and throughout the world. They're not the broad, wide path that everybody meets at, beloved. I don't care what anybody's telling you. You cannot preach the gospel. The gospel, Christ said, he is offensive. He comes to set a man at variance. Wherever you find a worldly congregation of people in the multi-thousands, I guarantee you that church is not Christ's church. Can't be. Just according to the words of God. Can't be. Are there some there? Sure there is. But the vast majority of them, I guarantee you, are on the broad road. They want to blend in. They want to fit in, not be seen, not be noticed. Nobody knows anything about them. Nobody knows whether they're there or not. There's just another body in a seat. And they like it that way. They're lukewarm. They're right in the middle. Verse 18, he says, I counsel thee to buy with me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He's telling people, catch fire. Catch fire. Everything we need is here. We're the ones that won't go to the Word of God. We're the ones that won't hit our knees and pray. We're the ones that won't get out and serve Him. He has supplied all our need. It is us. It is the church. He's calling us lukewarm. He's calling us Laodicean age lukewarm for a reason. It's impossible for God to lie. Yea, let God be truth and all men liars, is what the Bible tells us in the book of Romans. So who's telling the truth? If Christ paints a picture of this last day's church and said it's lukewarm, I'm believing him. And I see it when you go to preach a revival and nobody shows up. Nobody invites anybody. Nobody does anything. Now I'm not talking about Young's beloved. I'm talking about that poor little church down there in West Jefferson all by themselves out in the middle of the sticks. And they ain't, they ain't interested enough. To, to get out in their community and get somebody out in that community to come. You know for a fact there's lost people there too, like there are everywhere else. The Spirit of God kept staying me because I kept preaching the gospel to preachers. It was a sad sight. Sad sight. It was a really sad sight. That's just, I, just, I, can't get that, I can't get past that picture. You thinking you got a, a, a group of people to come and hear the gospel or maybe they're even lost and some of them might have been. I don't know. But all of them were, were preachers. I found out after I got through that, that they were pastors. One invited me to do his homecoming and, and in, in July. And, and, and it's just amazing how every single person there was a preacher. There weren't nobody just invited from the church. The church is to do the ministry, not the preachers. The preachers are equipped through the Bible, the church, to do the job. Amen. But the church was non existent there. They weren't there. They weren't out there doing their jobs, inviting their brothers and sisters that they know were dying and going to hell. They weren't out there inviting people to a revival. A revival with nobody there. That was the strangest thing I've ever saw in my life. He says in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door. And a lot of people look at this different ways. He stands at the door of a man's heart, and he does. 
But beloved, he's addressing the church. He's outside the church in these last days. The churches will meet in his name. He says, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? He says, everyone that calls me Lord is, is not mine. We're going to get there. But he's a picture that's being outside the churches. He's not even in the church because he's divisive. He'll tell you that, that having, having lust is a sin, that, that adultery is a sin, that fornicating is a sin, that covetousness is a sin. All the things that he says, the world ain't down with all that. So they want to keep him outside. They want to claim the cross. They want to claim the blood. And they want to hang on to grace. And it's farther from any of them than they could ever possibly realize. A lukewarm society. A lukewarm church. As the church is, so the world's going to go. Same way in America. America's in the, sh the shape of sin because the churches have quit serving their king. They don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to take a stand. It's not my fight. It's all of your fights, beloved. He hung on the cross for everybody. He hung on the cross for everybody. He poured out his blood for each and every one of us. We're bought with a price. Therefore, we shouldn't be servants of men. We should be servants of God. He says he stands at the door and knocks. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Why, we know that if any man hears his voice, he says, Faith cometh by the word, by hearing. Hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So what you have in these days is you turn to 2 Timothy 4. How, how does a church become lukewarm? Well, first off, a church becomes lukewarm because the very first thing that has to take place, if y'all would have been here this morning, you would, have, you would have received an excellent message that the Spirit of Truth brought through Brother Kent, is that the word of God is living, beloved. It's powerful. It's active. It will do what God sets forth His Word to do. The problem is people are not consuming the Word of God. People are not reading the Word of God on their own. They're not coming getting Bible preaching or teaching. They're, they're not, when, when they walk out of this door, they think that's it. They're good to go. You're not good to go. You must take time on your own to search out the Word of God. It is your responsibility. God is not going to require your salvation or the lack thereof on any pastor's hands. Now, he might when he comes to that pastor. But when you're standing there before God, it's going to be you and him. It's going to be you and him. And you're not going to say, well, my preacher did eh, My but eh. What did you do? How did you receive my words? Why well, I didn't read them. Why not? I came to life. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst men. I loved you enough to visit you, to, die, to come to your planet and die, and you wouldn't have none of me. But you're going to cling to the cross and scream grace all the way down to the pit. It's terrible. It is terrible, beloved. You see it. You can see it. If you're looking, if you're out there looking with spiritual eyes, you can see it. You can see it in the churches. You can see it in the lack thereof. It's really sad. You get Bible preachers, God love them, everywhere, and they'll be hacked to pieces for their stance with the Word of God. They'll be cut down behind their backs, and, and, and people will just treat them in all kinds of spiteful ways because they're humbling themselves before Almighty God and preach. I saw them the other night, a bunch of them, they were all by themselves. Sad, sad thing. Servants, nobody to minister to. It's a sad thing. We're, we're living in that day. We're living in that day. All, all you have to do is watch the local news. Watch your world news and see we're in that day. The world has fell apart at the seams. He says why in verse 4, uh, chapter 4, first, Second Timothy chapter 4. Paul says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, the living and the dead, at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Be patient in it and keep it up. Stay in the doctrine of the Word of God. For the time will come, he says, when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Tell us what we like to hear. Tell me what makes me feel good. Oh, I like that. I like that message, preacher. Yeah, tell me what I want to hear. 
They heap to themselves preachers having itching ears. Give me what I want. And when anything comes in that they don't like, they as fast as they can are pushing that word right back out. Oh, he's wrong. Oh, he's wrong. Oh, he's wrong. That's not what I've been told. That's not what I've been taught. Follow along in the Bible as the words are being read and you'll have no doubt. They won't carry a Bible. They won't read their Bibles and then they'll say, well, that's wrong. How do you know? How do you know? They haven't a clue. He says in verse 4, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's what we have now. People are turning unto fables. Whatever sounds good, whatever looks good, whatever feels good, whatever smells good, that's what I want. I don't want this, this word that tells me I've got to choose between my own family and Christ, but that's what he says. I don't want this word that says I've got to die to my flesh and live unto him, but that's what it says. I don't want this word that tells me I've got to forsake all that I've got and serve him, but that's what it says. I want to wear my crown right now because every other preacher on TV is telling me I can have my best life right now today. Amen.